I want to continue on with the fibers. In the previous video, I created a sculpture, and I will link that video right here. So if you have not seen that, I hope you'll go back and check that out. But if you watch that, you know that what I'm doing here is taking that silk fiber and pulling it onto this window screen. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later, but I used the piece of fabric that I create out of these silk fibers in a collage. And I want to show you a quick preview of that finished piece. This is just one little corner, one little snip in hopes that you'll stick with me, see how I made it. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. As I said before, we are pulling those fibers onto this window screen sandwich, if you will. So what you shall see that I have laid down is a piece of deli paper on the far bottom, a piece of long window screen. That window screen is cascading off of the top of my workplace, and I'm pulling the fibers onto that screen. Now that screen is not going to be a part of the finished product, project, that screen is just to hold these fibers into place so I can apply some material or some glue to the fibers to get them to adhere each to each other. So I've pulled in a horizontal direction. I'll go back. I'll pull in a vertical direction. I want to add another little bit of interest into this because I will be utilizing it as a collage. So I've added some embroidery thread and I've just strung that embroidery thread or I'm laying that embroidery th thread randomly down on this piece. And it's, it's that four, five, six, I don't know how many strands that embroidery thread comes in when you pull it off of its spool. But I am pulling that apart and just putting the single threads down. And I will, <clears throat> excuse me, I will continue on with laying the fibers down. I'm not really paying attention to color. I'm not paying attention to placement. I'm just randomly laying these fibers, going back and forth in a cross-hatching type motion. And now that I have everything down that I want, I'm going to fold that screen over and begin to add the glue. This is a glue and water mixture. I do create all my own Mod Podge. I'll link that video up above to create your DIY supplies. I think there's Mod Podge gesso and texture paste in that video if you'd like to see it. It's right up above. I added a little bit more water to that recipe and made the, it just a little soupier, not too much, but just a tiny bit soupier for this purpose. I'm utilizing a kitchen sponge to lay it down and just a inexpensive cheap paintbrush to put that glue down. I put it all down on one side, flip that screen over, and am putting it on the second side as well. I think a big part of getting these fibers to stick together is that pressure that comes with that sponge. When you put that sponge down, you're kind of squeezing it into place. So there it is. And I'm just making sure there's nothing, nothing loose there. And I'm going to pick that up and I want to move it to a clean deli sheet that does not have the glue on it. And I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to allow that to dry. Now, I walked away from it and left it overnight. And when I came back the following day, it was good and dry and ready for me to use. So here we are the following morning. And you can see this is just a very sturdy piece of paper. I've pulled out a canvas because I have decided that I want to collage with this piece of fiber 
on this canvas. My granddaughter is wanting something for her room and she has chosen, she informed me that the colors that she likes are purple now. So I've got to incorporate some purple in this. So I shall start off with a Titan white and a white, mixing it together, spreading it across that canvas with my key card from a hotel, reward card, old credit card, whatever you have on hand, catalyst, whatever works for you works for me. And just spread, spreading that to remove that blank canvas. I could have done this with gesso. I chose to do it with acrylic paint. Now <clears throat> that everything has dried, I'm coming back with the painter's tape. I'm putting the painter's tape in a vertical orientation on top of the canvas. And then I will pull another piece of that painter's tape and put it horizontal. I am not trying for this to be even. I am just putting areas where I can color block my background. So I'm creating a <clears throat> color block background. I will be utilizing three colors. This brilliant green. Um, this is called brilliant, uh, brilliant yellow green is what that color name is. It is just a store brand paint. Then I will utilize a turquoise and I am also going to utilize a violet. So I have th chosen three colors, brilliant yellow green, turquoise, and violet to uh, color block on this canvas panel. So once I get this coat of green down, I am pulling a piece of um, screen that I had left over from the fiber pull. And I'll show you what I do with that in just a moment. But right now I am coating the outside. I want to coat the outside of the, or the edges of this panel in the same color that I'm color blocking. So now I have that piece of screen. I've laid it down and I am taking just some white and creating just a little area of white here in that crosshatch pattern that the window screen gives when you go through that screen. So not only do I like the way that looks in the white, it also because that screen was as wide as my green area there, it also removes some paint in that my paint was wet enough that it also worked for paint removal and I removed some of that paint in the uh, other green area. Now I did coat this with turquoise. I didn't think it was necessary to <laughs> show you the paint process again. You know what that looks like. I just took my painter's tape and moved it up a bit to be at the edge of that green and then came in with that turquoise paint. Now I'm extending that white patch down. I probably should have waited until both of these were painted and dried, but I didn't. So now I'm extending that white patch down that one edge, pulling off the paint and then moving it, lining it back up and moving it. And I'm being very brave in a white shirt and pulling out my paint or a white long sleeve shirt that I actually wear during the day when I'm not in the shop. So, you know, I'm really testing my capability to keep paint off. I'm going to go ahead and coat the left side of this panel with the violet. And I'm just using a card to coat that. I'll come back in with one of my bigger brushes and coat it. And I'm not really paying a lot of attention to my brush strokes here, simply because I <clears throat> am going to utilize something else for some paint removal on here. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So I have that coated 
I've coated around the edges, so the edges are blue, green, and violet. I'm crumpling up a plastic bag, just the bag probably that um, I picked up some art supplies and they, they put it in. And I'm just removing paint and creating marks in that violet color with that paint. Now I'll pull my tape off. And there I have my background. So this is my dried piece of fiber that I want to utilize as part of my focal point for this. And this project took so many turns. Um, there was so much drying time involved in the different colors of paint, um, drying time involved and in, in putting this down. I would put it up, let it dry, work on other projects, look at it, think, and eh, maybe I need to add something here, something there. So it was kind of an ongoing process, but um, I'm happy with, with the way that the end result turned out and I hope you will be too. So I'm trying to determine exactly where I want to glue this fiber down. And I'm not sure what to call it. My fiber cloth, my silk cloth, my cloth made of silk fiber. But it has incredible texture to it. And it's, it's really quite, quite pretty. I have pulled out an oil stick and have decided to just uh, make some random marks on the background with that. And that is an oil stick in a deep purple. And now I have pulled out my gel press and I am pulling in some gold craft paint. This is called true gold or pure gold. I'm sorry, pure gold. I'm dipping my bag in that paint and just applying it with the bag. Now I think overall this collage took me about a week to finish because of the drawing time in between and my time in, in getting in the shop and working on it a little bit. I'm just going around the edges and giving it a little um, purple um, around that blue and kind of defining, getting sort of a shadowy look in between that purple and that blue with that purple oil stick. And now I need to decide exactly where I'm going to put that fiber. You'll notice I'm in a white t-shirt now. I Just a little personal information about how I work. I buy extra large men's white t-shirts that come down to about my mid-thigh and they're the v-neck t-shirts. I don't care if I get paint on them. I don't care if I spill something on them. It doesn't matter to me. So I'm never worried about or concerned or restricted with what I'm doing because I have a pair of blue jeans that I put on that are covered in paint. My painter's, painter's pants, if you will. I have two of those. And then I have this slew of white v-neck t-shirts. So I don't look too fancy when I'm working in my shop, but I know how messy I am. So I try to protect my clothes by not wearing them over to my workshop, studio, craft cabin, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to glue that down. And in the same light of that, 
the the my husband built me this business building and the way I finished it was don't put anything fancy in here because I'll have paint on the walls, paint on the floor. I I'm messy, I know it. So if you walk into it's not if you walk into my workplace, it's not a refined, beautiful studio place. It is very much a working um, area. And there's paint on the floor. There's paint everywhere. So it, it's who I am. I've accepted that. Gluing that into place. And I've used two glues. I've used my glue and water mixture to first get it into position. I picked it up because I didn't feel it was adhering the way I wanted it to. And I put some glitter glue on it to make sure that it's good and secure. Now I'm laying that deli sheet over the top and, and just pushing it with my hands to spread that out. And there, I think it looks pretty good there, but I think I want to move it over a little bit. <laughs> so before it dries, I'm going to move it over just a little bit closer to that white section. I don't necessarily want to cover that. But I think I have it positioned where I want it now. So I've allowed that to dry overnight. And once again, I'm coming back with the gold. I've just spread some gold down on my gel press again. Uh, spritzed it with some water to get it nice and liquid. And now I'm using my fan brush to just pat that fan brush and splatter pieces or little dots of gold throughout this entire canvas. So I'm starting to be happy with this. I hope you are too. I hope you like this fiber addition to the collage. And here I, I want to tell you this is not what I end up with. This is not at all what I end up with. But I had this brilliant idea, or so I thought, that I would cut these characters out of a fashion catalog. I think it was Land's Inn or Talbot's or something like that. I cut these two women out. And I didn't want them to appear as they did in the catalog, so I painted them with a black acrylic paint. And now I thought, I'll position them. This will be the focal point for me in the middle of this collage. So... Here we go. I have my magazine image painted. I've pulled out these Kozo fiber uh, spirals. I don't know what the company that makes them calls that big sheet of spirals, but um, I'll link it down in the description below where, where you can get these. I know that there's a lot of collage artists that use these and a lot of other people on YouTube that I've seen these and I love them. Um, I've tried to make my own and they just don't turn out quite as nice as the ones that you can purchase. So I'm going to get those glued into place. And that um, background becomes very, very transparent when you put these down. And now to glue my little magazine images in there. And I don't think that's bad. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think it would have been a bad thing to leave it like this. But I just didn't like it. I felt like the magazine um, paper was too thin 
on top of this fiber and there were all kinds of ridges and bumps and it just felt cheap looking to me. It just didn't, it just didn't look like I wanted it to look. It wasn't the outcome that I had envisioned and I decide to go ahead and get rid of it. What I'm doing now is getting those um, edges, getting everything secured around the edge so that those little fibers show on the edge as well. And here we go with the ripoff of, of the paper. And this, this took a, a lot of thought for me to do this because I thought I've put all of this work into creating the fiber, painting the background, getting the background so that I like it. And now I'm going to rip this off and probably destroy everything. And then, you know, you have to stop and think it's just paper. It's just paper. It's a canvas. I can scrape everything off the canvas and use it again. This is not the end of the world. So I ripped it off and it was soon enough that the um, glue had not really set. I sprayed it with some water and just rubbed it with my hand. And the interesting thing that happened is you see a little bit of print. I wound up rubbing all the print off and getting rid of, of every little notice. You can't even tell that it was on there. And once I had all of that off, I of course allowed that to dry while I decided what I was going to do. Um, once it dried, I came back and thought, well, I'll add some liquid pearls which I always love those. I love those dots and I wanted to add some additional white to the entire image or to the entire piece. So I added those liquid dots just kind of randomly throughout the canvas. And those of course have to be left overnight so they can set up. I took my black ink pad and inked around the outside edge to give that shadow appearance or that dark framing. And now I've decided that I think I would like an X right there. I brought out some Sumi ink and a Sumi brush, made my X on tissue paper so I could audition it and then decided to go right on the panel or right on the canvas with the X. Just kind of going around the outside edge with a little bit of that black ink to add just a little darkness to the outside edges. And now for my focal point. I had this uh, Kozo paper and I just cut um, very abstract figures out of that Kozo paper and I'm painting it with that violet paint. And I also made black backgrounds for each. Now I choose not to use the black background so much. I might use it on one. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't decided yet. But I want to position, as I told you, I think in the beginning, this is for my granddaughter. And it is my daughter, my granddaughter, and her younger sister. So it's a family of three. And I thought this, this could be the representation of mom and the two daughters here my little family. This is my daughter that's that's in the military. They live on a military base and she is a military child. We'll just maneuver these around until we find a good spot for them. Then we will glue them down.
Now I'm looking at the finished pieces. I'm doing this voiceover and thinking, <laughs> when am I going to get to where I actually leave the position these? So I don't think that's bad. But the mom is going to be moved over to the right and glued down on the edge of that. And you can see I've been working on edge other projects as well. You can see the sunflower stencils in the background that were designed by Christy Hartman and produced by PM Artist Studio. I have my three characters positioned where I want them. I'm going to glue them down and then I will take my charcoal pencil and go around the outside edge as you can see here and give them some defining in the finished piece. And this is a little few close-ups of how that finished out. I hope you liked it. I hope you will choose to continue to follow me by subscribing to my channel. Of course, that like button does help me um, incredibly well. It tells YouTube to throw my videos out to other people. So I do appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments. I love to read them. I will respond to each and every one. So I hope you have enjoyed my fiber cloth making and how I have utilized it to collage. And once again, my name is Peg, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I've put another video here that I think you will enjoy, and I shall say bye for now.